Hello friends, this is Zots, or maybe secretly a lizard. And as you can imagine, I play a lot of DVD, I make a lot of DVD content, and I'm a killer main. So a lot of people are curious about which killers I enjoy playing the most, and which killers I enjoy playing against. So today, after a bit of thought, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you in order all of the killers from my most favorite to play to my least favorite to play. And on the second half of the video, it will be the opposite, which killers I enjoy playing against. You can use the timestamps down below if you wanna skip to that part. Anyway, starting with my favorite killers to play, and number one is the Plague. The Plague is... She, she's got a bit of everything. You want to be an M1 killer? She can do it. You want to be a focus on power usage killer? She can do it. Want to focus on the chase? She can do that. Want to focus on controlling the map with macro play? She's able to do that. Meme add-on? She's got it. Good add-on? She's got them. Busted add-ons that are super oppressive? She's got that too. You can almost do anything with Plague. As of some years ago, they made an update that gave her one default fountain, so you always get to use your power at least a little bit, and her movement became a lot more fluid. And as of a very, very recent, very, very recent update, they also removed a camera bug that made her feel a bit weird when she used power. There are uh, there's only a few frustrating things about this killer, but personally, she hits all the right spots for me. I personally really, really like her. She's the only killer that I've prestige 100, just because I enjoy her so, so much. Next up are these three killers. The Artist, the Cenobite, and Dredge. These killers are very map controlled. They are very macro intensive. Sure, they have chase powers that can be more or less powerful. Um, in the case of the artist, it's quite strong. In the case of Cenobite and Dredge, it's a little bit weaker, but their chase powers are very rewarding when they work right. And their, their add-ons are, are fun. Uh, they, they get to do a lot. You get a lot of chances to express yourself. I feel like Artis is a little bit stronger and he's not as map dependent as Dredge, not as frustratingly difficult sometimes, and doesn't have any RNG element which, uh, for example, Xenoboid does, but for the most part, these killers are just really, really fun. You're always doing something. There's almost no dull moment with these killers, and I find them very, very rewarding. Uh, next up is Xeno... Uh, sorry, it's Nemesis and Xenomorph. These killers... They're, they're nothing like the previous one. It's not about controlling the whole map. There is a little bit of weirdness to them, right? Sometimes the tunnels aren't in the right places. Sometimes the zombies get stuck. That's why I don't love them as much. But their chase is so deadly from up close. When I hit a nice tentacle or a, or a nice tail hit with Zeno, I feel really rewarding. It's They are the killers that I play when I don't want to think a lot too much. So I enjoy that. Next up are the strategic uh, area control killers. Trapper used to be my main. I put millions of blood points to Trapper. He used to be the killer I played the most by a long shot. Probably still is over time. And Hag, she's a bit stronger and not as challenging, but I also used to enjoy her a lot. She used to be one of my favorites as well. The strategy part of them, I really, really like. Um, Hag is just, you know, I don't know. It, it doesn't feel all that challenging. Sometimes you win without really doing much. And the sad part about Trapper is that over the years, they have changed the grass and most of the smart traps just don't work anymore. So even though he used to be number one in my heart, now he's dropped quite a bit. Uh, if I started playing the game now, I don't think I would enjoy him very much at all. Singularity, on the other hand, is quite different. Uh, he is about area control, but also a lot of other things. I would enjoy this killer a bit more if he didn't feel so add-on dependent. Without a certain add-on or two, he feels incomplete, and that is a bit upsetting. But I'm sure that with some changes, this killer one day will be one of my favorites. He, like, oh, especially now that I have a new computer and I play a lot smoother. Oh man, it feels so good to play him. He's very smooth in some ways. It feels really rewarding to use his power and overcome the odds that you're typically against. Really like him. The thing, the thing about Singularity is that in some maps, it's really not that fun, but it's only a few of them. Next up, we have three killers that have always something to do in chase. With Clown, oh man, I feel so good putting yellow bottles, thinking this, thinking that. With Chucky, I know that the counterplay is difficult, but it's also really fun to do crazy stuff. And Slinger is a similar thing. You're always going for something fun. There's always a fun build. These killers are pretty chill uh, to me. Uh, moving on, we have other killers that I also like for Chase, and this might raise an eyebrow or two, but seriously. Uh, Sadako, even though she's not a Chase killer, I really like the mind games with Reiko Watch. I really like that the fact that the, the manifestation mind games are now stronger after her rework. So I like that part of Sadako a lot. Uh, Wesker, uh, Demogorgon, and Oni, they are mechanical killers that I don't play as much. I don't feel like I'm super good at them, but I enjoy them. They're, they're also pretty chill. I always have a good time. Uh, then moving on to killers that I enjoy, but, I mean, they don't really do anything super special for me. Spirit is fun to play, but then you dominate so much, and it feels like it's all... I don't know. It, it, I don't feel super, super engaged. So whenever I hit a survivor using my power, I'm like, yeah, okay, I heard pretty good, you know? Uh, Ghost Fist does involve a bit more thinking. 
Uh, but it's a pretty basic M1 killer. You do a little bit of plotting. Same with Legion. Pretty chill killer. They don't do anything super special for me, but I enjoy them. I, in general, I enjoy killer. The next few killers have a bit of ups and downs, okay? Knight and Bubba, I would enjoy a lot more if they were not as Adam dependent. Adam, uh, Adam this Bubba is miserable. You don't get to use his power almost at all. So you always want to run Chili and, and engravings. And it's... Uh, uh, well, not the engravings, though. Beast Mark's the equivalent. And for Knight, it's the same. You always need the yellow add-on. You always need the map of the realm. You always need this. If these killers were a little bit better, they would immediately be bumped up a little bit. Huntress, the loop of gameplay is pretty fun. Billy, the loop of gameplay is pretty fun. Quite strong right now. Nothing super special. Uh, Wraith, I kind of enjoy, although I also feel like it's a bit basic. So, yeah, not, not, super, uh, not super excited to play Wraith at any one time. Then we have killers that have something wrong that I don't quite enjoy. Doctor is the strangest one. I can't explain why I don't love Doctor. Doctor is arguably my deadliest killer ever. I have one of the biggest win streaks out of any killer. Maybe the second best win streak I've ever had on Doctor. Uh, I played him in tournaments several times, at least a couple times, I think. Uh, I played, you know, when we play him in challenges, he almost never disappoints. He does really, really good. And yet, I don't really enjoy playing him too much. I do well, but I don't enjoy him too much. I don't know. It's just, it's hard to explain. I don't know. I don't know why. Uh, the fact, I guess, that you depend on connection and that add-ons need to be used for his power to feel really good in Chase, that probably plays a role. Although, in the next update, he will be a little bit better. They're going to buff him quite significantly. Uh, maybe that will change the way I feel about him. Then there's Skull Merchant. Honestly... Ah, Skull Merchant is such a tragedy. I would like to play this killer. Anytime I've tried to play this killer, even in fun ways with meme add-ons, even trying funky stuff, people disconnect on site. I'm not joking, last two games I played, people gave up so quickly before they even see what I'm even doing that that just turns me off. Uh, there's no way other way to put it. It doesn't matter how much potential this killer have or the fun few things you can do, which you definitely can. It doesn't matter. If people don't want to play against her, it will ruin my day. Trickster pisses me off and... And Pig pisses me off as well. These are two killers that have a fun power to use in chase. And then half the times you don't get to use it. Half the times I'm using my knives. I'm thinking, why am, not, why am I not M1ing? And half the times I crouch as Pig and they leave the tile. <sighs> yeah, Trickster, I think, is a bit of a disaster. There's a few add-ons that, you know, if I play him that way with the first... You know, if I use a certain build in Trickster, I enjoy him. It's not too bad. With, with Pig, I think the next update is going to make her a lot more enjoyable, and she'll probably be brought up to, like, medium or something. Uh, maybe a tier up. I think I'll enjoy her a bit more. Right now, she feels really pathetic. Uh, if you bring the add-on to read artists, they all have distortion. If you bring the add-on to to have better chase, they all pre-drop pilots. If you bring the add-ons to kill them with uh, passively with the uh, head traps, what's the point? That's not fun. I mean, yeah, might, maybe you win, but what's the point? Not very engaging. But still more fun than the next few. So, Twins um, twins is here, frankly, because of the bugs and quality of life issues. I actually really like the Twins. If Twins worked perfectly and had a few quality of life, I would bring it up two or three tiers. Uh, so, just letting you guys know, the, the Twins is only here because there are many quality of life issues. They feel extremely sluggish. There are so many bugs. And even if there's no bugs, every now and then you play against one person that has exponential or a few of the really rare perks that absolutely demolishes twins, and the games go on forever, and it's not really that fun. There's also many times when I find myself slugging at four gens, even when I don't really want to, just because the power funnels you into playing in a way that's not always fun. As for Blight and Nurse, as someone that plays all the killers more or less, Blight and Nurse just feel OP. They just don't feel rewarding. When I... I did 50 wins on Nurse, and I learned a lot, and it was really difficult, actually, uh, back in, you know, some years ago. And I did the same with Blight. I got 50 wins on Blight as part of a challenge. I learned a lot. Uh, by the end of it, I felt like I was having a pretty good grip, even though he was a bit different back then, right? But then after that, I felt, okay, I've already challenged myself with the skillers. Why would I ever want to play them? Like, if you play as Nurse... You see, oh, it's a bad map. Normally here I would be struggling. Oh, they have strong perks. Normally I would be struggling. But then with this killer, you, know, you never struggle. And one thing that I've noticed happens a lot with Blight is that I'll play against survivors that are objectively better survivors than I am a killer. They are playing a better game than I am, and I still win. Why? Because funny little add-ons, haha, go brr, you know? Uh, so yeah, Th these killers are just too strong for me to feel like I've earned most of my wins. Even though mechanically they are pretty fun. Even though mechanically they are pretty fun, there is a stain on them that I just cannot remove. So I don't enjoy playing as them very much. But I still enjoy them more than X3. Freddy is just the most boring killer in existence. I cannot think of another killer that has 
worse or at least more boring add-ons. There are like two or three add-ons that are worth bringing on this guy. Some of them are extremely boring. They do something sharp, but they, they don't really do anything for the gameplay. Uh, you basically don't get to choose when your power works. Uh, which is not very fun. I know as a gimmick, maybe the fake pallets do it for some people. They don't really do anything for me. I don't think this is really fun. So yeah, just the fact that he's extremely boring. There are a few add-ons and a few perks that you might think to yourself, wow, this could be interesting on Freddy. And either it's effective but boring or it's horribly, horribly awful. I've tried so many fun builds on Freddy only to be beyond disappointed every time. I also don't like Myers. I'm sorry, I'm gonna say it. I think Myers is awful. Uh, sure, if you bring some of the stupid add-ons that allow you to tombstone people, you can win. But I don't find that fun. I find that super, super lame. Either you get stomped or you stomp. There's no in-between. Are there some fun gimmicky builds that you can run with Myers? Like, to, like uh, for example, Mirror Myers in Larry's? You know, indoor stealth Myers? Yeah, but after you do that three times, it's it's over. I don't have any more fun doing that. So I find everything about Myers either gimmicky and unfun, uh, too strong and feels unfair, or painfully below average and you're struggling. So yeah, there's not a single time I'm playing Myers and thinking to myself, wow, this is so fun. Not very often. And finally, we have Pyramid Head. What a shame. This used to be one of my favorite killers. After they nerfed him shortly after release, his movement became a lot clunkier. He got the reverse Plague treatment. Plague used to be slow, and now she feels fluid and fast and, and nice. This killer was the opposite. Uh, but that's no way he's at the bottom. I even with that, I would still place him somewhere in the middle, probably. What happens with this killer is that he's also bugged. Anytime you drag your sword, your camera... <laughs> has this little rocking motion back and forth. It's really, really ugly. Not to mention that he's add-ons. There's like two or three that are worth bringing and they're not even that fun. Anything else is just worthless. Absolutely depressing killer uh, with almost no redeeming qualities. But now we talk about which killers I like to play against. And last time I talked about this, people were at my throat, but I think my favorite killer in the, in the game to play against is Legion. And let me explain, don't get the, <laughs> uh, you know, don't, don't point the fingers yet. The thing about Legion, okay, is that no other killer in the game allows you to play out the game as much as Legion. With Legion, you're always going to have an opportunity to do something. Other killers, sometimes they'll tunnel one person, sometimes they'll, they have a power that is so oppressive that either it does nothing or it kills you outright, right? But Legion, he's a killer that has to interact with multiple survivors. Uh, against which you can use several things like body blocking, uh, body blocking during frenzy so that he loses his power. There's so many opportunities for your build and your skill and your ideas and your plans to work against Legion that not many other killers have that. With many other killers, as I said, it's going to be all or nothing. With Legion, you're going to have a lot of in-between. You're going to have a lot of opportunities to show what you can do, how you learn how to counter the killer. And because at the end of the day, he is an M1 killer with no real power for the most part outside of perks, you if you're good in chase, you can run him a long time and that, that always feels good. So the fact that he allows you to express yourself and, and play out your plan is pretty good. Many interesting builds uh, can be used against Legion, which is not the case for other killers. So I personally really like going against Legion. So whenever I go against one, I go, oh, finally, you know? So that's pretty good. Next up is Baba, okay? Like, the thing about Baba, right, is that, like, there used to be a time when Babas would just hook you and camp you at five gens and that was lame, but that that breed of Baba is just gone. It's just extinct almost completely, which is awesome. The Babas that, that play now, for the most part, they focus on chase and that's pretty fun. It is a very high... Uh, adrenaline kind of killer where if you make a mistake you know it's gonna cost but if you outplay the killer oh I feel so good oh they bump oh you make so much distance oh you go into a locker and you know the timings oh they get you oh wait but maybe they did a trick that you didn't know about and now you're down oh that's exciting that's really really exciting the only thing I don't enjoy of course is that he's got a chance so if he camps someone that is a bit of a <laughs> not 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 too fun scenario but other than that I find him really really fun we then have killers that constantly put a threat on you in chase. I enjoy these. Some of these are pretty strong killers too. Uh, but the thing about Wesker, especially if his cooldown is up, uh, Nurse and Slinker, is that you cannot just run to the next loop, right? I, with Legion, you can run from one loop to another, not with these killers. These killers either throw themselves or shoot at you, and you need to constantly zigzag. You, con you need to constantly use your environment to body block or, or block their line of sight so they don't get to use their power. 
It's true that if you go against a very, very good one, any of these killers, it's going to be a bit frustrating, but it leads to such exciting games. So that's kind of what I like. There's no dull moment uh, dull moment against these killers. It's not like, oh, I have a pilot, I'm fine. No, no, no. You're always locked in. You always have to think twice. And how playing them feels so, so good compared to many other killers where it's kind of predictable what's going to happen. Uh, Doctor and Demogorgon, eh, I, find, I find exciting for similar reasons. With Demo, you can't just run everywhere. He does have a bit of a power to catch up and break pallets. And with Doctor, you can't just sit on pallets and pre-drop them. He will outplay that. So I enjoy them for a similar reason as the other four, but not as much because they have a bit of a component that can mess with you. The thing about Demo, right, is that he can shred through pallets really quickly. And sometimes by the time you enter a chase, all your pallets are gone. And the thing about Doctor is that he can put you in Magnus Tier 3, which is the nice items and can be quite annoying. There's a bit of like messiness around Doctor that can come, especially if you're not in communication with your team. So that could be a bit annoying, but they're still pretty fun. Next up, these killers come with an asterisk. There's the Hag, there's the Cenobite, and there's the Dredge. These killers are all over the map, you know, for different reasons. There's They have a, a bit of 1v4 in different ways, right? And especially against the first two, it feels like if you play well enough, you can make them lose the entire game. It feels really, really good to be a good survivor and have a good chase against a hag that fails to entrap you in her area or against a Cenobite where he's chasing you with the box and he cannot down you for the life of you. Uh, Dredge, similarly, he has a chase power that's a little bit on the weak side. So if you made the correct reads, it feels really good as well. Or if you stay cool during Nightfall, right? Uh, so I really like the strategic part of these killers, and I like to play against them a lot. Sadly, these are the type of killers where if you have a teammate that is a bit of a weak link, uh, you don't even get to play against them. That person goes down, that starts the nightfall, it starts the cube, starts the camping in basement, and you might as well say GG. So that's the one thing that holds me back, despite me enjoying them a lot otherwise. Uh, next up are the killers. Uh, <laughs> that have a few props around the map. The thing about the pig is that in chase, she's so bad that you you get to do a lot against her, which is awesome. And when two gems pop and she doesn't know how to put a trap down, the early game can feel so good if you play it right. Uh, her stealth is also, despite being a stealth killer, she's not super, super difficult to see uh, coming. Um, so you can, you can play solo and not be too bothered. Uh, Nemesis... And Xenomorph have annoying things about them. The zombies, some people find annoying. I like to use my little tricks to 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 kill them or to or to send them off. I kind of enjoy that sometimes. And it's also the the early game is also pretty exciting on Nemesis if you manage to split them up. And yeah, I, I kind of enjoy I, I enjoy the fact that I get a lot of time as well in the first chase because he has to hit you three times typically to show how well you can play against them. I'm not very good against Nemesis. But I, I enjoy it still. Uh, I really like the turret thing in Xenomorph. I feel like that's something that if you do it well, you could actually throw the killer off. And it feels pretty rewarding. Even though in the 1v1, Xenomorph is pretty strong. I still enjoy him. We then have killers that, frankly, if they are really, really good, you're not going to have a good time. Art, a really good artist is a nightmare. A really good Billy right now is horribly difficult. And a good Twins is also going to be a hard time. But these killers are not super common in the case of artists and Twins. And especially if they don't play perfectly, oh man, it's exciting. Dodging the birds, uh, kicking Victor, uh, crouching under a chainsaw. All of these things lead to exciting moments, so I enjoy them as well. Blight. Blight is a shame. Blight is a killer that if he had no add-ons, if you just remove his add-ons, I would actually enjoy playing against quite a lot. Also a very exciting killer where you're constantly engaged. You're like, oh, he's on cooldown for just a few seconds. Now get here, now crouch under this, now, now hide, now do this little trick and that. The problem with this killer is just the add-ons. Oh, odds, but they rework the add-ons. It doesn't matter. Like, you don't know how fast he is. He could be anywhere from normal speed to plus two, pl to plus three percent, to plus 20 percent. His turning could be anywhere from normal to like 50 or 60 percent more turning than usual. It is such a mess of a killer. Unlike Wesker, which is for the most part predictable, for the most part, this killer is all over the place. And that just counteracts, uh, it just offsets all the enjoyment that I would otherwise get. Uh, from him. The fact that he's a strong killer that typically is played by, I'm sorry, sweaty players that also run the best perks on him uh, also doesn't help. Genuinely a fun killer to play and a fun killer to play against if it wasn't for all of these other factors, sadly. We then have three killers that are really oppressive in chase. If you get unlucky against a hunter, you're dead. If you get unlucky against a primitive head, you are super mega dead. And Oni, I mean, you do get a chance to, to play safe before he gets his power, but then it's the same. These killers force you into 50-50s, into guessing games, and most of the times you're going to lose them. But when you win, 
Oh, they feel so, so good. Making a pyramid head miss three punishments of the dam. Ah, there's not a better feeling in the world. Uh, Oni, if you can outplay him, my goodness. If you have a bad team, it's gonna suck. Same with all of these, honestly. Uh, Hunters, I'm only rating right now. In the next patch, it's gonna have like nine hatchets or ten hatchets even. I don't think that will be fun. But right now, I still enjoy her. We then have the killers that are a little bit M1, but also have a strong power from time to time and require a bit of teamwork. Uh, cleansing for Plague and, you know, the EMPs for Singularity. Actually, I enjoy them, especially if they're not playing really well and my team is not doing something really stupid. But I feel like these are killers where your team will do something really stupid and you'll put yourself in a really, really bad spot. Against Plague, everyone will stay injured and then go down in a second or they'll cleanse in the worst spot, give her power. Against Singularity, they'll drop pallets and the pallets will be broken uh, in chase because they don't know how that whole system works. So these are killers that would be fun. And you know they're difficult to play sometimes, so you respect the person behind it, but your teammates bring a a, a lot of weight into what happens. Then we have uh, average M1 killers, Wraith and Ghostface. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, especially if I'm streaming or playing solo, it is a bit silly that, uh, you know, <laughs> I need to pay attention to, uh, to the game a lot more than I'd like. I'd like to just be chilling, right? So I'm a bit biased there. Um, if I'm playing with friends, obviously I don't care nearly as much. Uh, so the stealth, the stealth killers do get me sometimes, but I don't mind them. They're very basic. If you outplay a Wraith for a long time, it feels great. If you have a Ghostface mark you and you outlift the whole thing, oh, that feels incredible as well. Uh, Freddy, I mean, it does allow you to play out a lot because he's so weak and uninteresting. I have to say, I've played against some good Freddies and it doesn't feel that great. I, I think it's just, you know, dead smack in the middle of super mega average You'll probably get to do a few things. There's not any interesting techs or tricks against Freddy that you wouldn't do against literally any other killer. So, yeah. Not on fun, but also not thrilling. We then have killers that are pretty oppressive in chase when played correctly. Don't get me wrong, you play against a bad clown or a bad spirit, uh, anything goes. But a good spirit, a good clown, a good, a good uh, Chucky or a good knight even. In chase, your options are so limited. You have to play so safe that I feel like it's not very fun. Against the Spirit, no joke, drop Shack Pallet of 5 gems. Against Chucky, if he's on cooldown, drop whatever the heck you need. And Clown, let's be honest, if he plays well, you also need to pre-drop many times and play relatively safe, right? Uh, Knight uh, is a bit different, but he also forces your hand in some ways, right? So I feel like you don't have a lot of expression. You don't really, uh, unlike some of the killers that we talked about earlier, that po constantly put a threat on you, these guys don't constantly put a threat on you. They put a threat on you sometimes. Every 20 seconds, every X reload, uh, whenever the guards are back. And then you don't really get to do much until the next cooldown. So it's basically wait for the cooldown, wait for until the bottles are out. And you don't... It's not the most thrilling experience, but it's not bad either. Now we get to the killers that I think are just... Not that fun. Uh, Trapper. I don't know what it is with Trapper, man. There's only two things you need to do against Trapper. Generally, coming from a former Trapper main, do not go down next to Baseman, number one. And do not step randomly on grass outside of chase. It's, if you're outside of chase, look at the ground or, or take a little slightly longer path so that you don't walk through grass. You do these things, you will win against trappers 99% of the time. Somehow my teammates are completely unable to do this. They go down in basement 9 times out of 10. They step on random traps 9 times out of 10. At least it feels that way. And it just feels like a, it's a killer that you either stomp and it doesn't feel too good. It's a killer that you have to play extremely safe against, which is not the most fun. And if you're playing solo, it always feels like such a drag when your team doesn't listen or does the stupid things. And now it's someone in basement and you're like, okay, well, it's probably best if I just let them die in basement because this guy's trapping every orifice coming out of shack. So that doesn't feel too good. Trickster is also a similar all or nothing beast. He catches you in the open, you're dead. He catches you in a good spot, he leaves you because he can't touch you. Uh, main event happens on you, doesn't feel too good. Ways to outplay him, just play extremely safe, pretty run, have good comms. And not too many other things. Feels kind of bad. Uh, uh, yeah, not exciting. I don't think this is an unpopular opinion. And then we have Sadako. She's been reworked. She's a lot nicer. Uh, I haven't. I've only played against two Sadakos or one Sadako since the rework, so it's really hard for me to say. But um, I also feel like the gameplay is really reliant on what your teammates are doing. Uh, the fact that they can be condemned or they can pick a TV when they don't need to, and then you don't have it. Like all these things are just. Eh. So, yeah, it's a stealth killer that is that requires a bit of your attention, that your teammates can easily die to. Want to take hits for a teammate? You can. She goes through you. She and she, It's not like she's terrible or anything, but she is just not that exciting, and it leads to a lot of unfun situations where you have very little agency. 
And finally, the last two killers that I don't enjoy going against, Myers. Remember everything I said earlier about how Myers is either super weak, and then there's no challenge, has a tombstone and your teammate feeds them, and nobody has fun there except maybe the killer, or sends you two Larrys with three solo teammates, and you have no idea what is going on. How is that? How is any of that fun? There's literally not a single fun uh, scenario in your average Myers game. Either they get stomped or you get stomped and it never feels fair. It always feels like it's like, okay, which of the stupid add-ons does he have, you know? Not fun at all, man. It's like, oh, you have a guy on the hook and an infinite tier 3 Myers going around. What the hell are you supposed to do? Some of the least fun interactions in this game. And somehow still not the worst. The worst is probably Skull Merchant. I'm gonna give you, I'm, I'm gonna tell you a little secret. Just like before, I still don't think Skull Merchant is like the devil. I don't think there's so much wrong with her that I refuse to play against her or disconnect against her like some people do, right? But it doesn't matter what I think because I have to play with teammates. And my teammates just keep up against her. I, I played a game recently where I run the killer for two minutes in the end game. My teammates not only did not open the gates, not only did not come to body block, they both got injured passively across the map. So Skull Merchant is like a trapper that is actually strong. You know how people step on traps and you wonder, oh, why are you stepping on a trap? The killer's nowhere near you. Well, it's the same, but it happens all the time. People get injured all the time. They give her a speed boost all the time. Uh, if you're in chase, you're, you're hurt by the actions of other people outside of chase. Uh, the stealth also is quite rough if you're playing solo. You don't have a lot of info. She has all the info on you guys sometimes. And... I don't think there's anything more soul-crushing than having to go through the middle of the map to go for a rescue or some other thing and seeing four drones stacked onto each other. Like, I don't mind dodging one drone. I don't even mind getting hit by a drone in chase. But having four drones and, and then being like, oh, I'm going to disable them. And then they come back after a few seconds anyway. Oh, it is such a drag. The fact that she has no identity, the fact that she's all over the place, the fact that people are, are so traumatized by the old school merchant that they refuse to play her, that's the big deal. For me, personally, not that big of a deal. But I don't want to play against a killer where my teammates are have a 50-50 of just disconnecting. If it was for me, personally, I think this killer would be brought up a couple tiers, maybe around the Knight or Spirit or Trapper, where, you know, it's not the most fun, but also you get to do some things and you can show your knowledge. There's not a lot of amazing things you can do as a survivor, I have to say, against this killer. I know there's some tricks, I know there's some things, but yeah. That about wraps up what my favorite killers are to play against. Was my reasoning solid? Did I miss something? Is there something that makes you very different from me? Maybe you have a uh, a, a, a different uh, point of view? Uh, feel free to share it with me in the comments. I hope that this answered any of your questions. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.